So Ford has decided that with their new Mach E that's coming out, rather than discussing uh, their range and their battery capacity in theoretical capacity, they're going to actually show what the computer is allowing the owner to actually experience, which is phenomenal because the last time we saw anything like this was the original Chevy Volt with a V, it's in Victor, uh, where it said, oh, you've got 35 or 40 miles and it hid the rest. So the hidden capacity that, that the car is using for itself will no longer be portrayed. They've updated all their advertising and uh, they even have a nice feature where if it, the temperature is going to affect your range, it will show you on the dashboard temperature effect or um, range affected due to temperature. And uh, we were discussing before the show that hopefully this is uh, based on some predictive modeling and uh, geography rather than just a guessometer like uh, the second gen Prius, Nissan Leaf. Yeah. Because if you can count on it, that'd be great. Otherwise, you'll do like so many Tesla owners and uh, switch it to battery percent usable. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah having I... a car that actually tells you how far you can drive accurately uh, and is weather aware, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely was, huge. That's a, that's a great change. And I think it, it increases the consumer's feelings about transparency and reliability in EVs. It, I think it's a fabulous thing to do. And I really hope it means that the industry is going to adopt this practice. Yeah. Casey, right. you mentioned something about usable battery. Yes. Um, so how much of the, I mean, that implies that there's some of the battery that's not being used. Correct. So like in my case on my Tesla Model X, it's a 100 kilowatt hour battery, right? But I can only use, um, Five uh, percent of that is res is reserved for uh, well five kilowatt hours of that is reserved for the car to do its maintenance and make sure I don't destroy it if I if I uh, run it to zero. And uh, with my battery degradation, I'm actually down to a ninety kilowatt hour battery, so I've got a an eighty five kilowatt available. And so what Ford has done is so that you don't have to keep all this in your head. They're just selling you sixty eight kilowatts of capacity, sixty eight kilowatt hours of capacity, or um, seventy five. 0.7 kilowatt hours of capacity. So you don't have to worry about your battery degradation. They can just kind of hide it like that original volt. And so you'll always have, at least until you've got the extreme end of the life of the battery, you'll know that hey, I've got a 200 mile car, I've got a 150 mile car, whatever package you get. And it will maintain that as long as you're in ideal conditions. And with this uh, update to the gasometer, hopefully it's going to be really close to what it says. So if it says 100, you know, oh, I can do 98 to 125. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. really cool. Isn't this, um, so the other cars have done this. I mean, I know because I had the, the Gen 2 Prius for 13 years. And, um, and I know there was the big thing that Toyota padded above and below. And one of the reasons was, like you had said, it would, it would maintain, it would, you had a, uh, what? You, you, ah, geez, I, in my head, it all made sense until I tried to, tried to speak. <laughs> but it, um, the, the padding actually keeps you from going 100% full, 100% depletion, which helps ensure the longevity of the battery. That's what I was exactly. trying to point out. Good yes. battery first, management software. Yes. Yeah. Plus mm -hmm. the first time that thing spits gas on the, on the ground in front of you, you, you no longer want to that extra squeeze. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that. But yeah. but yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, this is this is really cool from Ford to uh, – to, to come out and be like you had said transparent um now all they need to do is come out with another viable electric vehicle and yeah. um you know that would be great and then they they are doing uh with the uh they're doing it based on your local fuel economy cycle so in north america we'll get epa in uh europe you'll get the uh what the wltp so yeah and it uh, looks like Mark has put up pictures. Yeah, speaking of the Mustang, uh, up here in uh, Waterloo, Ontario, we had a visitor. Uh, yeah. We had a, uh, a Mach-E show up uh, that uh, was had uh, Michigan manufacturer plates and mm. uh, stopped at the uh, Ford uh, Software or Innovation Center up in Waterloo, Ontario, attached to the University of Waterloo. And uh, nice. it was here for the weekend. Uh, someone just plugged it in on Friday, and it sat in its spot for two days. And uh, just and by the, itself. And then the Tesla and, and guy photobombed it. 
One, yep. one of our members uh, from uh, the Waterloo Region Electric Vehicle Association spotted it on Saturday, made a post about it, and all of a sudden it had lots of visitors coming up to check out the, uh, the prototype. So uh, it was very cool to see it in person. Uh, one of our uh, owners has a, a Model Y and decided to park beside it to see uh, size comparison. And as you can see, they're, they're, they're pretty close uh, in size. The, the Model Y might be slightly larger. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's a pretty close comparison, and uh, the uh, the vehicle was charging on L2, and obviously two days is plenty of time to fill up any car. Yeah, not cool, Ford. You can't just leave it there. You gotta well, charge up and move on. Well, again, this this is a this is a private L2, so they can do yeah. whatever they want with it, right? This is this is attached to the Ford building. It's not really for public use. Well, what if um, another engineer needed to charge their prototype? Then, uh, then they'll <laughs> call the it. emergency number and get it done. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Now, when, now the interesting the thing Ford was that the, the the badging oh, was the yeah. European badging on this car on one side and the North American badging on the other side. So this <laughs> oh, is wow. this is definitely a mixed up model. Uh, the E4 we believe stands for the uh, the European uh, all wheel drive uh, E4 four wheels. Uh, we're guessing. Mm -hmm. But um, it was interesting to see that. The other thing was, of course, you could tell it was a prototype because the uh, the <laughs> production model will have blue tape, not white tape. <laughs> <laughs> and that looks like an adapter from uh, the J1772 to the European. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. So it's a European plug, and they, they needed the adapter to charge for the North American standard. And yeah. it's wearing a European plate holder on the back. That's true. Good catch, oh, Casey. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 So uh, that was that was interesting to see uh, this vehicle show up uh, for a couple of days uh, here in Waterloo. So uh, it was uh, it was fun to see it, and uh, we hope to see uh, some more on the roads. We're we're certainly going to be keeping an eye on the Ford building a little closer than we have in the past since uh, <laughs> since this showed up. So if you see an ad for a Ford Mach E and it only ever shows the left side. That's this car. <laughs> and if you're in Europe and it only ever shows the right side, it's also this car. <laughs> it's also this car. Just look for the tape. I think it's the color of the tape. Yeah, yeah the color of the, the tape, tape is the dead giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I do believe the... it. Yeah. No, I was go ahead. Say, anybody see the rear blinkers? Are they sequential like the old uh, Mustangs They are. Were? They are sequential. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's a nice I, touch. I think... Because I was able to interview at the Chicago Auto Show um, one of the Ford Mach E uh, representatives, um, John B, friend of the show, and um, she was talking about the badging. And I and um, Mark was absolutely right. I, if I remember correctly, the four is the all-wheel drive. The X is like extended range. There was so they were within the badging. You would be able to figure out the exact model and range and, and configuration. Just based on that, I forget exactly what it was, but. It's and a quick, like uh, a quick shout out to Simon Wong who provided the photos and the Model Y for the comparison. Mm -hmm.